Well, welcome. In this video, we are going to be continuing where we left off in the previous one. We're still looking at variance and standard deviation. In the first video, we looked at the uh, variance and standard deviation of an entire population. And in this one, we're going to focus on just finding the variance and standard variation where we're looking at something smaller, uh, specifically dealing with a sample. Um, the process is going to be very similar. There's only one slight difference, so it's not like that previous video was all for naught. Um, but at least that previous video kind of gave us the, the main idea. But in this one, is going to be looking at, um, like I said, specifically looking at samples. So first, let's see what the first difference is. And we can see up here in this paragraph that in when we're working with populations, the symbols that we were using were Greek symbols. That's not going to be the case in this when we're dealing with samples. And the reason why we're doing this is because when mathematicians started working with variance and, and standard deviation, they realized that um, dividing by n really wasn't the best way to do it. Um, and they found that dividing instead by n minus 1 gave a better uh, estimate. And so when we're working with a sample, instead of using the symbol mu to represent the mean, we're going to use the symbol of an x with a little line above it or a bar above it. And we just simply call it x bar. So x bar is referring to your mean. And then when we're referring to the variance, we use s squared for the variance. And you might wonder, well, why s squared? Well, the standard deviation, remember, is the square root of the variance. And so the standard deviation is represented by just s. So then it would make sense that the variance would be represented by s squared. And so here in this box, we have the symbols representing what uh, or how we're going to find the variance and standard deviation for a sample. Again, it looks exactly the same as we saw before. The only difference is that in instead of dividing by n, in these situations, we're going to divide by n minus 1. And let's look now at an example to help us see how we're going to work this out. Okay, one of the first things that we need to notice is that um, is this word of caution, and that's that in this book, most of the data is going to come from samples. So unless told otherwise, we're going to use the variance and standard deviation formulas uh, for sample sizes. So you want to make sure that you almost always use this uh, method unless they tell us otherwise and say we're specifically working with an entire population. So let's look at this example. It says, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, 10 to 20 earthworms per cubic foot is a sign of healthy soil. Now, Mr. Green, he checked the soil in his garden by digging seven one-cubic-foot holes and counting the earthworms. He found the following counts. And then it says, calculate the sample variance and sample standard deviation of the numbers of earthworms per cubic foot. Okay, so remember, just like before, the first thing we need to figure out is what is our mean? What is our average? So if you add these total up, we're going to end up, let me change my pen here, we're going to end up with a total of 90 earthworms from these different samples that he took. So he took one sample and found four earthworms, another sample there's a 23 earthworms and so on. So there's a total of 90 earthworms from those seven samples. Well, if we find the average or the mean, you would take that 90 divided by the 7, and we end up getting 12.86. So now we've got to figure out, well, how do each of these samples uh, deviate from the mean? So we're going to subtract each of these values from 12.86. And so when you do that, for this first one, we would get negative 8.86. And then if I subtract 23 minus 12.86, I get 10.14. Oops. And then if I continue on, I'm going to get 2.14, negative 2.86, negative 4.86, negative 0.86, oops, and 5.14. So again, along the bottom here, these are dealing with our totals. And remember, just like before, if we want to check to see, did we do everything right? If I add up all these deviations, they should add up to be zero. In which case, if you took the time to do that, you would find, sure enough, that those do add up to zero. Now we're going to find the square of those deviations. So I'm going to take and square each of these. So to save us time, I've already done that for us. So you're going to have 78.5, 102.82, 103.5, 103.82, 103.82. 
0 0.74 and 26.42. So remember to find the variance we need to take and find the sum of those square deviations. So if I were to add all these up now I'd end up getting a total of 244.86. So to find my variance we're going to take um, that 244.86. And remember, the only difference here is we're going to do everything that we did in the previous video except for we're going to divide by n minus 1. So we had 7 pieces in our sample size. So we're going to take 7 minus, divide this by 7 minus 1 or divide by 6. And when you do that, you get a variance of 40.81. So next, we want to figure out, well, what's our standard deviation? remember is represented by just s, well that's the square root of our variance. So we take the square root of 40.81 and we get our answer of 6.39. So that is your standard deviation. Now you might be wondering, what's the whole point? Why, why do we need to find the standard deviation? Well, remember we've talked about how statistics can be uh, manipulated and sometimes Maybe the mean maybe is not a good representative of um, all of the data. Maybe the median would be a better um, statistic to use. Well, what the standard deviation does is it tells us how far away all the data is from the mean on average. So in this case here, on average, each of these um, samples, we're about six worms away from the, uh, give or take six worms from the um, average. So that tells us that our average of 12.86 might be a pretty good sample size. If you had a really large standard deviation, that would tell you that the mean is not a good uh, measure of center, and maybe there should be some other measure of center that we use, maybe the median or the mode. So that is the purpose of the standard deviation. It just helps us decipher whether or not the mean is a good uh, measure of center. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of how to find the variance and standard deviation for a set of data. And now you can complete the rest of your assignment. So with that, good luck.